The Arizona Cardinals are back home hosting the Carolina Panthers in week 10. And a couple guys who used to be really good at football in a roundabout way are impacting the Arizona Cardinals. How it actually is going to impact the team. Should the Cardinals and their fan base be afraid of now the LA Rams and the incoming Carolina Panthers? Bo Brock, Alex Clancy, we're talking about it here. Locked on Cardinals. You are Locked On Cardinals, your daily Arizona Cardinals podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Rise up, Red Sea. It's a Friday edition preview of Week 10's game between the Arizona Cardinals and Carolina Panthers, two teams trending in different directions, but News surrounding both of these squads. Bo Brock, Alex Clancy hanging out with you. This episode of Lockdown Cardinals brought to you by McDonald's. McDonald's is more than just affordable and delicious food. It's been serving communities since 1965. There's always been more than just that delicious food, the Big Macs, and of course the Coke that just hits differently. It's an unofficial community center. And a big thank you to our friends over at Mickey D's, the Golden Arches, for always being there. I'm loving it, and I'm loving the Arizona Cardinals matchup this weekend, both sides of the football. I think the Arizona Cardinals have um, some advantages as far as uh, the matchup's concerned, no matter who's under center in the shotgun for the Arizona Cardinals. You know, Alex, looking at the injury report, who's practiced in the last couple of days, Wednesday was basically not even a practice. It was a glorified walkthrough, um, and then Thursday you had some key absences continue. No DeAndre Hopkins, no Kyler Murray. Uh, no Rondell Moore. Are you concerned at all about who's going to be present for the Cardinals come Sunday against the Panthers? I mean, a little bit. I mean, you can't be so blind as to think that they're just going to walk in and beat whatever 11 or, you know, whatever 22 players are on the opposing squad. Like that's how, that's what happened to the Browns when they were good a couple of years ago. You know, it was obvious that they, they had outgrown they had Osgood Slaughters. You know, do you remember that with growing up where if you grew and you got that bump on your knee, it's called Osgood Slaughters. I remember my buddy had it. I had it a little bit where you're growing too fast for your bones to keep up. Mm. And the Cardinals aren't that. So they're not going to deal with what the Browns did, even though they've been compared to the Browns uh, over the past couple of years with, with their growth. You got to respect whoever's wearing the opposing jersey. And that seems so cliche and dumb, but right. yes, if, there, if nobody's going to play... Like we don't know, we don't know if this is just coy, if this is Cliff Kingsbury rolling out the the, the fruit truck and letting guys take a few days off, mm-hmm. um, to, to recoup because their bye week's so long and so late. But I don't know. You have to be at least monitor it. Like this isn't in a yeah. vacuum that they're guaranteed to win on Sunday. There's there's a bunch of different things at play here. Obviously, the cliche of any given Sunday, which you've kind of preached the last couple shows, and and yeah, you should absolutely respect that, especially with uh, the example that was set on last Sunday in Week Nine between the Buffalo Bills and the Jacksonville Jaguars. That uh, there can be about as ugliest of the NFL's games can possibly be, and one of the worst teams in the league can beat one of the best teams in the league. It's just how it goes. That's that's how it's been ever since this beautiful game began. You know, um, but. There's also, look, the Carolina Panthers are 5-0 and against the, the Arizona Cardinals the last couple times they've played, and they don't play good against backup quarterbacks and all these things that come into play. But also what comes into play is what J.J. Watt said against the Cleveland Browns so infamously was maybe we're just effing better. Uh, and I think that there is, if, if Cliff Kingsbury is riding the line between, hey, we are going to rest our guys. We're going to get healthy, but at the same time, we're going to remain focused on who we said in our key to victory today, uh, the, the opponent in front of us. You know, I think that the Arizona Cardinals should be fine. I think they should absolutely be fine. Uh, you know, Kyler Murray, 24 years old, uh, as far as gifted, he's, it's, it's, he's, he's in the, he's, there's a, the one, he's a one percenter. With, yeah. I mean, yeah. he is absolutely his pictures there in the, in the, in the dictionary with with uh, gifted anyway he 17 days it's all said and done is going to be between when he rolled his ankle and when he could potentially play on sunday he said it's incredible you know i'm paraphrasing how how much his ankle is healed when he talked to the media on wednesday so 
I, I got to imagine he'll probably be ready to roll. And if not, you know, Colt McCoy is back. I'm not going to expect the type of game where Colt McCoy passes for 84% and just completely cuts apart a pretty good Carolina Panthers defense. Uh, I, I, you know, the Panthers are, are going to have the advantage of game film now on Colt McCoy in this offense. And if he has the same opportunities as he did against the Niners, then shame on, you know, the Carolina Panthers for not adjusting, but you know, it's going to look different, but you know, the Arizona Cardinals are in a really prime position to improve to nine and one. Yeah. I mean, this is a don't get cute game, kind of summarizing what you're saying. If Kyler's ready, let him roll. I mean, it doesn't matter. I mean, their NFL defense is going to play from now to week 18. I mean, it, it, it doesn't matter. You know, if if you want to rest him one more week, you can decide that. But if Kyler's ready to roll, you got to get him out there because what you need to do is continue this momentum, get the rust off because you're going to CenturyLink, whatever the hell they call it, uh, up in Seattle next week with Russell Wilson with a week under his belt. And most likely, I would assume that he's at least questionable to play on Sunday. Um, this is just a game where you need to instill your dominance and remind everybody that you're not a fluke. And it's not to prove it to anybody else. It's to continue to prove it to yourself, continue to tweak. Tom Brady has had an offense around him pretty much forever where he got the ball out in under three seconds. Kyler Murray, if he's hobbled, they can put a game plan together where he gets the ball out in under three seconds with an elite offensive line with them all healthy. He could sit in the pocket all day. You know, so this isn't the old offensive line where he's going to be running, where you have to think, oh, you know what? Maybe they should sit him another week to get him fully 100% because he's going to need to use his leg for this offense to have any giddy up. That's not the case anymore. You know, he's not even an effective runner anymore. Like he's not getting chunk yards on the ground. He's just not. And we saw it earlier in the season. He had a really sexy run down the sideline on the left-hand side, which we remember, but he hasn't had to run for them to win. So if he can sit in the pocket, you can run a game plan where he gets the ball out quick. If he's at 80%, roll him out there. I mean, let's yeah, I roll because yeah. you made a good point yesterday or the day before where you don't want him rusty going to play Seattle. Right. You know? I mean, it's not like they're playing whoever. I don't know. I mean, they don't have that many real cupcakes left on their on their schedule, but it's not like they're playing Jacksonville next week where you can just go into him rusty. So I think you got to play him if he's 85%. I think I've changed my mind five times. If he's ready to roll, he needs to be out there, in my right. opinion now. I think that's my final answer on it. And and with the evolution of the offense and him and the emphasis not being his legs or at least 50% of the equation, it, it, it makes things easier. Yeah, he can sit back there and he can just shoot fish in a barrel if he wanted to because of his grasp of the offense and the playmakers that he has out there, even if DeAndre Hopkins can't go for a second straight week. You're getting A.J. Green back, who came off the uh, reserve list earlier this week, which is good. He'll get him back on the outside. We'll see what uh, Rondell Moore's status is. Christian Kirk was a full participant in, pass, uh, in practice, even though he hurt his thumb before he made that pass in the game against the 49ers. So Arizona Cardinals offense without Chase Edmonds should be – you know, pretty close to full strength. Um, it, it, things kind of get interesting because it, it's n you're not playing a game necessarily against the Carolina Panthers on Sunday. You're playing a game uh, in, against the the rest of the NFC West, against the rest of the NFC playoff picture. Uh, big news happened yesterday. We'll key you in on why that's the case. Plus, along with the big news that happened yesterday afternoon, there was earlier news that could impact this game on Sunday. We'll get into it. It's Locked on Cardinals, Bo Brock, Alex Clancy. Follow along on Twitter at Clancy's Corner, at Bob Brack to find me, Bo Brock. And of course, at Locked on AZ Cards. Over a thousand Twitter followers now. Thank you to each and every person that follows along, listens to this podcast, watches it on YouTube. So please subscribe if you haven't done so already. This episode of Locked on Cardinals brought to you by Mickey D's. McDonald's proudly serving communities since 1965. McDonald's has always been more than just a place to get affordable, tasty food. It's a place where friends and family can get together, where the teams that just played for Friday Night Football can go meet up and get a tasty Big Mac and French fries. You've got Mickey D's. You know about it. Been around since 1965. And McDonald's has always been a place for affordable, tasty food. But more than that, a place for friends and family the community can gather together. Big thanks to our friends at McDonald's for always being there. Da 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 da. I'm loving it. Nailed That's it. That's right. Crushed I knew it. you were going to say that. You brought it home. You brought it home. Bo Brock, Alex Clancy, Locked On Cardinals, d d hanging out with you on a Friday. Um, you know, it's. 
I, I can't, th this season is flying by. We're in week 10. We're in week 10. I highly encourage you to check out uh, Locked On NFL's yesterday's podcast, Alex and uh, and Tyler Rowland. You guys had your mid-season mid awards? Yeah, mid-season awards. We talked about OBJ. Uh, obviously, it's a, it, it's a moot point now uh, yeah. that we'll talk about in a minute. But, um, you know, uh, mid-season awards, Cliff's coach of the year. That, that was mine. I mean, it was, it was him and Vrabel. Um, he said, I think he said Vrabel because <laughs> he covers the Titans. So that's obvious. Right. It's kind of interesting that right. he and I are linked up now, you know, mm -hmm. like it's wild. Um, MVP. He, I think he said Lamar Jackson, um, mm -hmm. which is true. I mean, I know that I'm not a big believer in that. I know you're not. Um, I said Tom Brady. Um, and it, it, the reason why I said Tom Brady mid season, and it's easier when you have all of the weapons, all of the weapons. Tampa Bay makes the Cardinals offense on paper look like a B plus instead of an A, you know, just a grading on a scale, which is wild. Um, and then I don't know. I, I can't remember the other one. Uh, defensive player of the year. I said Trayvon Diggs and then, and then he went with miles Garrett. I thought Trayvon Diggs. It's so much harder to intercept yeah. the ball than it is to get a sack in the NFL. Cause you're further away from the quarterback and mm. they, it leads directly to a turnover. So I kind of went with that, but yeah, it was a fun podcast. Yeah, I, I think I agree with your uh, with your take there on Trayvon Diggs than than Miles Garrett, who also left Browns practice the other day with a foot injury. It looks Yeesh. like so. Uh, you know, it's that time of season. But interesting, as I said, check out that podcast. You mentioned Obel Odell Beckham Jr. Now a member of the Los Angeles Rams. The rich get richer. Uh, he joins Von Miller. The splash move that they made last week, even though the Miller didn't play. Uh, joins uh, joins guys like Matthew Stafford, Cooper Cup, who's just absolutely, I mean, he's the best wide receiver right now in the NFL, statistically for sure. You've got Robert Woods there. You've got Aaron Donald, Jalen Ramsey, just an embarrassment of riches up and down that roster. Odell Beckham Jr., um, in my opinion, does not give the, the Rams an edge any more on Friday than they had going into Thursday morning. Like, I, I, I don't know. I'm not a big believer. Like he just turned 29 years old. He was on a team. Like the Rams seem to be Alex, this team. That's the, the last big splash moves they've made. Like when was the last time that Matthew Stafford, Odell Beckham jr. And Von Miller were making noise in January. Uh, uh 2015. Exactly. And that was Von Miller, right? I yeah. mean, it was him in the Super Bowl and he was yeah. he was dominant back then, but a lot of it's been a long time. It's it we're six time. years removed. It's it's uh and he was dominant. Like that defense won them the Super Bowl. Right. Peyton Manning was throwing with with, with a noodle. <laughs> was. And Brock Osweiler was winning games for them. Right. But yeah, right. No, you're right. It, it's you're just right. uh to, to me, it's they're bringing in a bunch of guys where they weren't the the problem for their previous teams, and, and with that comes red flags. And the guy who has the most red flags is, is the most recent addition in Odell Beckham Jr. Where I look at that roster and it's like, I really like what I've seen from a second year wide receiver in Van Jefferson, who's their third option as far as throwing the football. Obviously, Cooper Cup's number one. Roberts Woods is number two. And he's emerged since the last time we saw that team back in week three. And then you now you have to figure out, like, it's not, Sean McVay's offense is not the same as Cliff Kingsbury's, where there's just you you're going to have the opportunity to feed all these mouths. Like I don't think that that's possible to keep a guy like Odell Beckham Jr. happy. Like I can see him already being happy, unhappy by the time these the Arizona Cardinals and Rams link up in week 14. I'd rather be the Cardinals. <laughs> yeah, you know? no doubt about you know? it. I mean it's and this isn't a homer so like their moves of the last few weeks makes what the Cardinals did this offseason look like not star studded and uh, Odo Beckham hasn't been relevant in four years. Like really, I want him to have a chance. I think it's a great spot. I would have chosen green Bay because I feel like that could keep him and Aaron Rodgers there and relevant for years with him and Devontae Adams. There's too many cooks in the kitchen in LA. I feel like he chose the weather. He chose a team with, you know, that's going to make the playoffs. He's not going to get a lot of run. You think Cooper cup's going to move aside. You think Robert <laughs> no. Woods is going to move aside. Like this isn't, at their greatest, they are a pound the ball on the ground offense to set up the play action. Odell Beckham wants eight targets a game. It ain't going to happen. He could have got eight targets in Green Bay. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, it's just, I don't get the move. And it's fine. Cool. I don't either. It's well, going to be I awesome. Think, 
That Monday night football game is going to be sexy as hell with the Cardinals and Rams, but it's a roster. It's not necessarily going to transit on the field. I hope he does well. I hope it helps him. I just don't think it will. I don't. I don't. I. I mean, the guy I mean, has. You know uh, what I mean. Both his, his past. His yeah. His past two teams have ended in divorce, and I mean, he's the. It's it's been the other person's fault. Uh, I, I mean, Baker Mayfield. He's making him out to be you know is is incapable quarterback. It's just like no. I mean, he's not. He's overrated maybe, but he's not. You know, he doesn't have the. He has the ability to get the ball to good wide receivers. I, I just think, you know, 29 years old, he's had a couple serious injuries. He went to LA because he thinks that his, uh, that he transcends the football field where it's not, that's no longer the case. You know, it might've happened a long time ago, but it's not happening now. Like your opportunities, th those, those are drying up. If, if this is you trying to kind of like wring it out of the washcloth and go for it. But as far as how much better it makes the LA Rams as a football team, I think it's, it's very, it's, it's, it's like, centimeters it's like nothing it's it it doesn't it doesn't move them you know and, and catapult them past the arizona cardinals in the afc well, nfc west yeah i mean but but let's let's put it into perspective here there i don't know what the contract is because when we're recording this i don't think it's out yet i just think that that you know it's it, it was um it was dropped a couple hours before we recorded um they're bringing in von miller and odell beckham for one play one play that changes the landscape of a game whether it's to vie for a top spot in the playoffs once you forget about either of those guys they're going to kill you it doesn't matter if they're relevant or not you have to account for von miller you have to you just have to and you didn't have to before and now you do so it changes the way teams look at that defense with odo beckham same thing we don't know what his numbers are going to look like it doesn't really matter the fact that he's on the field keeps defenses honest. It's not a direct correlative to AJ Green, but it's in that arena where right. it's like, you know what he can do. He mm -hmm. will burn your ass if you let him. So you have to account for him. You didn't have to before. You had to account for Van Jefferson and Tyler Higby. Now you have to account for OBJ, which just changes things. Yeah. OBJ he had throws his all best... the tape out the window. Yeah. I mean, he, he, he had his best performance against the Arizona Cardinals in that lopsided loss for the Browns. He had, I think like eight catches for 79 yards. He didn't find the end zone. And that was his most impactful game all season long. Um, you're, you're right. And, and here's the difference, though. The Arizona Cardinals have a bunch of guys who have nonstop motors compared to guys on the Rams that are there for just a singular reason. Just And, and if it's, you know, Bill Belichick, do your job, that's fine. But Odell Beckham Jr. isn't that guy. He's not going to be like, oh, I'm going to be a good team player and I'm just going to take, you know, when my opportunity comes, I'm going to take advantage of it. I'm just going to, aye, aye, sir. Yeah, yeah, Mr. Stafford, thank you for getting me the football. It's That's not going to happen. It's like in, in the per perfect circumstances, yes, with his talent, it would translate to a uh, very scary, scary situation for the rest of the NFL. But you know what's going on and who's coming in. He's not going to just completely change overnight just because – and do you think he learned from his mistakes in Cleveland? I don't even think the guy thinks he made any mistakes in Cleveland. You know what? I'm going to defend him a little. He wasn't. No. That wasn't. No, just for that part. He was a model from what we see. We don't see everything. From what we saw in New York and what we saw in Cleveland, he was a much more level-headed person, at least on the sidelines from what we see. I he mean, wasn't relative the same player, what okay? it was when he's, he's course, fighting a absolutely. kicking net, you know? Yeah, yeah. well, I mean, it wasn't it wasn't his best moment or pile driving into Josh Norman, which is right. what he was really known for where he missed, luckily. But Odo Beckham didn't have an offensive game plan that suited him. He didn't because he saw Jarvis Landry like, oh, man, I get to go play with with one of my best friends. It's in Cleveland. It was they were uh, the defense was getting better. They were on the up and up. You know, if you look at it right, their jerseys have some some sexiness to them. Like I could see the appeal, and they also traded him, so he didn't have a total say where he went. But he's never played with a quarterback that could really suit his needs as a wide receiver. He had Eli, and he had Baker Mayfield. So defending him is difficult, but I don't think his ego is a big problem anymore. In, until mm -hmm. it is, I don't think it is. From at least what we've seen. And he's one, dude, I'll watch him every Sunday. He rivets me. He fascinates me mm. because his skill set is scary as hell if utilized correctly. Big ifs. Big I, ifs. I know. Of course it is. I think he, but I think this is no risk for is. the Rams. 
whatsoever. There's no risk. They don't have to. They didn't pick up that eight million dollars that they have to pay I think, him. I think he he's, he's, the ty- he's the type of player that can cause a rift. He can be a guy that can be a, 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 a cancer in the clubhouse, in the locker room. And I just think that uh, the Arizona Cardinals are, are are lucky that in the sense that he didn't go to Green Bay in the in the bigger picture. Because you're right, because of how much you have to force feed him, it would probably have worked better in Green Bay. Now he's going to have to fight for opportunities in that offense that already has a lot of talented players. There was another big move, another player that was a big name back in the day that is going to somehow potentially impact the Arizona Cardinals. I don't think it's going to be that quick. We're going to get into that, our full game prediction. We'll look at some spreads. It's Bo Brock. It's Alex Clancy. It's Locked On Cardinals, part of your Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Got to tell you about the Get Upside app. If you drive, if you buy gas, this app is free money in your wallet, in your bank account. Go to the App Store. Go to Google Play. Download the free Get Upside app. Use the promo code TOUCHDOWN. You'll get a bonus $0.25 cents per gallon. You can make up to $0.50 cents per gallon on your first fill-up with the Get Upside app. It's uh, it's pretty crazy. Fifty cents per cash back. Don't pay full price at the pump anymore. Use the promo code Touchdown. Get fifty cents per gallon cash back on your first tank. Some people who drive a lot, they're making upwards of two hundred, three hundred dollars uh, every month using the Get Upside app, and you can cash out anytime. There's like really no catch to this. Cash back gets added to your bank account. You can also cash out with an e gift card, PayPal. The e gift card you can actually use for Amazon and other brands. Uh, just download the free Get Upside app. Use the promo code, as we said, touchdown. Bo Brock, Alex Clancy, hanging out with you on a Friday edition of Lockdown Cardinals. It's our preview show. We're previewing the Week 10 game against the Carolina Panthers. It could be a battle of the backup. Sam Darnold is out. He's got the fractured shoulder. It's going to be P.J. Walker, uh, who played under Matt Rule in at Temple. And uh, P.J. Walker is also a guy that played in the – was it the AAF or was it the uh, – it was the AAF, right? It wasn't the XFL. Or was it the XFL? I can't I remember. It AAF. Yeah, it's the minor league system, basically, for for uh, NFL outside of college football. And he, he played well. He's got one touchdown to five interceptions, as Julian Council pointed out, in his NFL career. And he's going to be the guy that's going to be uh, orchestrating and running this offense that has playmakers. Looks like Christian McCaffrey's going to be back. You've got DJ Moore. And you've got uh, you know some in- interesting pieces there defensively. I think that's where the talent lies on this on this roster. And then the team re-signed. They were able to go back and kind of hash some things out between them and their old franchise quarterback. Cam Newton is back on the Carolina Panthers, and um, I, I, I'm not expecting him to play on Sunday. I, I think you know some people want to connect dots, and sure, Cam returns to Carolina, but it's a completely different group, completely different regime system like the idea that he could just come in in day one start on sunday is a little far-fetched in my opinion yeah um the thing that cam newton does better than any quarterback i mean ever is a very strong possibility here inside the five yard line effective runner better than any quarterback ever i mean i fear i feel like that's pretty safe to say i mean You could get out of here with Tim Tebow and all that stuff. Like, I mean, Taysom Hill in spots is making or giving Sam, uh, giving Cam a run for his money, but Cam Newton does still does a couple things very well. One, he is tough to bring down. And two, he is a very, very elusive runner of the football. He can run around you and he can run through all of your linebackers because he is a big, large man. And I feel like you don't need to know an offense to be able to do that. I'm assuming he's been keeping in shape because that's what he does. So the fact that he's going to be on the roster, I don't know. I reached out to um, our boy, Julian Council from, from Locked on Panthers. He hasn't got back to me because I reached out to him two minutes ago. But uh, in real time, um, if he's active, look for him inside the 10. Well, Even, you got to get like, inside the 10. I, I, mean, I that, understand. That... But if they do, like... You got, you got, you got Christian to McCaffrey, too. I mean, if, if you're going to give the ball to Cam Newton, then I think that's a win for the Arizona Cardinals at this point. I mean, instead of Christian McCaffrey, then then fine. Tip of the cap to you. Go for it. You know, very bold. The Arizona Cardinals did face Cam Newton last year. Didn't go very well. Uh, Zane Gonzalez missed a key 
field goal at the end, but you know, Cam Newton also wore a uh, personal foul type penalty from Isaiah Simmons that moved that drive into field goal so range. Dumb. It was a bad loss for the Cardinals because they lost to the Patriots. Like you saw that game and you were like, man, Cam Cam's lost it. Like he didn't look like the same guy that they faced a bunch of other times when he was the the face of the Panthers franchise. And you know, he's two and two in the regular season against the Cardinals overall. He's got a couple of playoff wins against the Cardinals, including that big NFC championship win over them where it was 49 15. They dominate him. Um, but yeah, we've got I, history I was, with Cam. We saw absolutely. we saw Cam's first day, first game. Him and Patrick yeah. Peterson's first game was at State Farm Stadium. 422 yards later in the Pat Arizona got Cardinals. Just cooked by Steve Smith. The whole <laughs> game just got absolutely punished now, come by on. Steve Smith. Look. Patrick Peterson he back then. I'm not going to slander that Pat Pete back then. He I'm was not, a different guy. Did he not get punished in, in his opening debut? It was his. It was his rookie debut. It was Cam Newton's rookie debut too, and he threw a 400 damn yards. Yeah, yeah. He was on my fantasy football bench. Um, I'm not bitter well, about right. it. Apart from <laughs> nobody knew what we were going to get from Cam Newton <laughs> when he's coming in the NFL. Nobody at Auburn. Anyway, so I think that's a non-factor. But when you look at this game. And we debated it, and we kind of talked about it. You know, Colt McCoy, Kyler Murray. Kyler Murray comes back in. I think you look for him to kind of kind of kick the rust off a little bit, get back in the rhythm with this offense. You could see it maybe slow out of the gates. Uh, Colt McCoy, I think the biggest obstacle with him being back in there is like he got rid of the ball at an absurd uh, pace last week. It was like 2.37 seconds. This is the highest speed average in the NFL in week nine, I just don't think the Carolina Panthers are going to give him that opportunity to do that again. So he's going to have to look downfield a little bit further than he did in, in his first start. Uh, but still, the Arizona Cardinals have an ample amount of offensive talent to that's that's way better than what they're going up against. And it's just going to be a matter of if, if they can, you know, their defense is going to be able to hold as, as much as they need to. If they can score a couple of times and they can just put points up on the bar board, whether it's finding the end zone or even just off the leg of Matt Prater, this game shouldn't be even in in doubt by halftime. Yeah, you know, I mean, we'll see. Like, with the, uh, it's got an eerie San Francisco 49ers with Trey Lance and quarterback kind of vibe, you know, where it could be ugly. It could be ugly. I feel like P.J. Walker is – far more equipped at this point to be a starting quarterback than Trey Lance. Um, and I don't know. And I, the, the offensive players for, you know, the Panthers, I think are better because Christian McCaffrey is, you know, 80%. Obviously that's an upgrade from the backfield from the 49ers. Yeah. They need to take care of business. The goal of every game is for Colt McCord to be starting the fourth quarter. So if Kyler Murray <laughs> does start, yeah, they get out to, you know, you know, a sizable lead and they're up 10 points going into the fourth quarter. I still think that what we saw from Colt last week, you trust him to be able to run the clock out, maybe put up put up a field goal and get away with a W. You don't have to blow this team out. If it happens to work that way, cool. This is a game you go in, you take care of business at home, you get a W. Their worst football has been played at home, which is wild. It's true. I mean, just de facto. I mean, their best games, Jacksonville, Cleveland, you know, um, L.A., and they their only loss was, was at home on Thursday night, even though it was a weird game. Right. But yeah, yeah. Take care of business, get the hell out of town, and go on, on to Seattle and then get into your bye week. Yeah. And it's and it's interesting with this contest, like with McCaffrey, it looks like he's gonna be back, but he's a shell of himself. You know, mm -hmm. it's not the Christian McCaffrey where we we've seen the highlights for God's sake against the Arizona Cardinals so long ago where he wouldn't have oh. even been down in a touch football game. Like he just runs rough shot. Like he just goes yeah, like an through. 80 yard run, right? Last yeah, time they were yeah. in town. And nobody touched him. Like he ran, like it was like through the, the defensive line, the teeth of the defensive line goes See? untouched. Yeah. Gone. But like it, it, with Cam Newton signing with this team, it's like these guys might be in the building, but they're still going to be ghosts of who they used to be. Like, and in people it, that, that rattles people because this, this franchise, the Arizona Cardinals, we're used to being on the the wrong end of all this stuff. This is a but this is a deep team, the Arizona Cardinals. So when we look at this this game, Alex, it's a ten point spread, according to our friends over at BetOnline.ag. The Cam Newton signing did nothing. The over under is actually uh, dropped. Uh, it, it's the I think this is the lowest of the season. It continues to drop uh, forty four yeah. total for this game. So what's your prediction for this contest? 
if you're going to take the under, you got to take the points. It's kind of the rule, low line, high, high spread. You take the points and the under. Um, I don't know. Like <laughs> 10 points is so weird. You know, it's just, it's just enough where there's no hook. So you could push. Um, this is a, the 49ers is making the 49ers game, which is running through my head. Like this could legitimately be like a 17, nine game. And you could definitely see that, you know, depending on who's playing on offense, I'll say Cardinals 24, 13. So I'm going to go against exactly what I just said. Yeah, you, you did. Take, where, where you give the, where, where you, you know, you lay the points and take the under. I don't think a lot of points are going to be scored. Yeah. It's uh, you didn't, you didn't think that one all the way through after you, <laughs> but uh, you know, it wasn't and, great. And Cliff Kingsbury, he's, he's done a good job in, in keeping everybody focused and, you know, the, the the two games that have been really tight, the the win by the skin of their teeth against the Vikings, it takes the uh, the, the missed kick and then the loss to the Green Bay Packers. I, I think that those teams are considerably better than the Carolina Panthers. And where Cliff Kingsbury has done very well in his career as Cardinals coach is taking care of business against bad teams like the Jets last year, like the Giants last year, like this year, the Jacksonville Jaguars, like the 49ers this year. Um, like the Texans, and even if if Kyler Murray is not in the lineup, and I and I, I feel like he's going to be in the lineup, I, I think that they're going to approach thirty points again, and they're going to this is going to be another easy victory, and we're going to be looking at a nine and one Cardinals team going on the road in Week Eleven against the Seattle Seahawks. Now, so my final score, Jesus. yeah, it's, it's pretty it's weird. Absurd. Yeah, my final score is uh, it's going to be twenty eight to 13 Arizona Cardinals cover that would not get them to uh to the the total though so that's the under I don't think they're going to hit the over of uh, 44 players of the game see it's always fun to see if I could steal one mm -hmm. from you well I don't have um, one in mind just yet got to come up with on the fly it's convenient it's really convenient <laughs> for you um offensively and this is weird, but it's more for this given moving forward. I'll say Eno Benjamin, um, because we need to know what he's got. If Chase is going to be on the shelf for a while, and you got to think he's going to be out through the bye week, because of where the bye week is, you don't want to rush him back a week early and and uh, risk you know more damage with the bye week in week twelve. Eno Benjamin is going to need to be a huge part of this offense, not necessarily with the amount of touches but with the trust that Cliff has for calling his number to keep the stress off of James Conner that we've talked about a lot. James Conner cannot be a 30-touch guy. Like, he can be for two games, and then he's going to get hurt. He's had so much uh, tread on his tires because of what how Pittsburgh used him. It's Eno. And it's not necessarily for the most impact, just to see where he is as an NFL running back to see if he can replicate kind of what he did last week. Yeah, it's interesting. Um, and I like it. I, I think t Zach Hurts, no matter who's a quarterback for the Arizona Cardinals, is going to be key. One, either getting Kyler Murray back in rhythm or helping Colt McCoy stretch the field a little bit more as a, as a, as a passer. I think Zach Hurts can have a big game against this uh, this Carolina Panthers defense who who does like to get after the quarterback. Son Reddick, we know about him. We'll see what happens with Brian Burns, who Mac Jones tried to rip his foot off of. Uh, if he's good to go, um, I like Zach Hurts in this game. As far as... Uh, the defensive side of the football. You want me to jump in or you want to go? Go ahead. All right. So I think this is a big game for Chandler Jones. I liked what I saw on tape from him against the Niners. I thought he did some good, very good things against uh, Trent Williams, who's a tough assignment. He got his sack. He got his uh, all-time franchise leading sack against the Niners. I think he can continue that, parlay that into another good game against the Carolina Panthers. Yeah, that's good. I mean, I think an easy one is you could say Isaiah Simmons every week. I mean, with PJ yeah. Walker being a backup, I'll say Marco Wilson. I want to see, I want to see what this cornerback room is made of. PJ Walker, as we talked with Julian Council yesterday, he throws a lot of interceptions. Yeah. Like the only game that he won last year was when Carolina gave up zero points. He threw two red zone interceptions. Julian talked about that on yesterday's podcast. If you haven't watched it, Julian, he's one of our favorites. We haven't actually done a crossover, but it was one of the more fun ones we've done. Um, I would say Marco Wilson because you want to see it's kind of like a a rookie wall in the NBA after like 35 games or something when their normal season is over in college and then you kind of see 
their their stats dip a little bit. Let's see if he can continue to emerge as what we hope we'll see him as is CB2 for now, you know, in perpetuity. Right. With him and Byron Murphy. So Marco Wilson, he hasn't had that. Oh God, I almost went Ven Wilder. He hasn't had that dare to be great situation yet. <laughs> he hasn't, he hasn't had that moment where it's like that dude is going to belong in the NFL for a long time. Now we had a breakup of Julio Jones right early in week one mm-hmm. that you featured on your on your um on your Twitter and video form, but he's been fine, yeah. which is better than bad. But I want to see that great moment out of him um against a you know a backup QB to start. Yeah. You know what's interesting about PJ Walker too? It's like he's practice squad Russell Wilson. So this is like a good like if because you know you're not gonna get like a, a guy that's great on your practice squad and, and, and the run. The, the opposing quarterbacks plays and stuff, but that's what you're getting. I mean, the similar, like a poor, very poor, 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 poor man's version of Russell Wilson. So it's a good little warm up. And same thing goes for these cornerbacks, you know, as they're going to go up against the tough uh, wide receiver court the next week, guy like Marco Wilson, if he can have a big game, you know, good for the Arizona Cardinals to, to really get a head start on a big division game. The next week we've gone really long here. We appreciate everybody tuning in. Make sure you're following along on Twitter at lockdown, easy cards at Bob Rack and at Clancy's corner. Follow me and Alex, of course, subscribe to our YouTube page. Check us out at halftime of the game on Sunday. We're there every halftime for each and every Arizona Cardinals game on our YouTube page on Facebook and on Twitter. Guys, have a great rest of your Friday. Enjoy your weekend. We'll talk to you on Sunday. It's locked on Cardinals. Now make your second listen locked on bets. Your boy Q, Lee Sterling, they're going to hook you up with the right spreads, the smart bets for this weekend.